fallout, smoke, women crying for their sons because their sons are not, Romans killing riotous groups that are rising up, free Judea, free our people, autonomy for Israel. You had Herod and Edomite and his dynasty, Herod's ruling, killing any potential threat, any potential Messiah. Then you had the Pharisees and the Sadducees that we learn from Josephus are not Jews by birth. No. Brother and sister, they are there. We are not lost. We are scattered. We are original Hebrews. Let's go! Oh, praise and be to the most high God. From my, I was a fortune to meet my grandparents. Whom from childhood, had always made us to understand that we are one of the lost tribes of Israel. Okay. So, from my grandmother. Right. Now, look at these. Yeah, I'm telling you, I got to show y'all. A, a, a picture speaks a thousand words. Just look for yourself. And this is the creme de la creme. All praises be to the Most High, y'all. Everything we've been through, y'all. The Most High is going to retribute it on all the nations that have had a hand in the oppression of his apple, the apple of his eye, his chosen people, his beloved, his fervent lover, his only begotten. They're going to have their part in the lake of fire. You see them tormented by some kind of creature. I don't even know what that even is, y'all. Judgment in chains. He that led into captivity shall go into captivity. All praise to the Most High God. It says, thou that dwells in the clefts of the rock. Whoa, I know a lot of y'all know about the Caucasus Mountains. Let's just let the word speak. Let's go to verse four. Though you exalt yourself as the eagle, and though you set thy nest among the stars. What's up, science dynasty? Last you rule but I am right. Eve of the tribe of Joseph. Welcome, y'all. It's, it's time to get these things said. Y'all, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Zion Dynasty, where your boy, your favorite dreaded Israelite, is about to breathe hot coals of fire. Let's go. All praises, honor, glory, dominion, power, majesty, world without end, to the mighty one of Jacob, the holy one of Israel, the redeemer of the 12 tribes, the resurrector of the dry bones of Ezekiel. Y'all, we coming through. Yes! All praises to the Most High, Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Y'all, welcome back to the channel. First, I gotta say peace, love, blessings, and Israelite power to all my Israelite brothers and sisters, all my Israelite kings and queens. Without y'all, this work would be nothing, y'all. I could not do this work without the grace, the strength, the wisdom, the revelation, the Ruach HaKadosh of the Most High, y'all, and all of y'all's support. All of y'all's encouraging statements, all of y'all's donations, all of this keeps this work going, y'all. This is truth over tradition. This is the, the, the red pill over the blue pill, y'all. We going in with facts. We ain't going in with nothing else. If it ain't in the book, if it ain't substantiated by history, genealogy, all of that, we don't deal with that on this channel. We deal with the facts. We deal with the smoke. Yes! So peace and blessing to all my Israelite family, but not just y'all. All those supporting Gentiles, those sojourners of Zion, those that truly have the love of the Father in their heart, that support his firstborn, that support the apple of his eye, yes! that they ain't caught up in the, the goon squad madness, right? I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna show the clip this time, y'all. But y'all, welcome back to the channel. Y'all like, comment, share, subscribe, do all that good stuff. Share this to as many people as y'all know. This is gonna be potentially the most controversial video that I have ever done on this channel, y'all. I have received this revelation a long time ago, really. And, and it's just been pulling on my heart. I've been like, everything that the Most High has given to me, y'all, I give it to you guys. Every book, every piece of knowledge that I feel like will help in the awakening of Zion, I present it to my people. This revelation, I held on for a minute. I thought about it, me and Shauna D talked about it. Y'all don't know how many times we talked about it. We talked about whether or not I should bring this out. But now that we're destroying all the lies of Christianity, there is a linchpin. There, I'm telling y'all, I got to tell y'all, there is a linchpin knowledge, there's a truth that connects the entire framework of lies, ex exploiting all those lies, 
and it reveals the entirety of truth. One fact, and that is hid in the person of Yahusha. That's why I tell y'all, Yahusha is the Messiah. Y'all have to, I, and I come from a Hebraic perspective. I need all those that are watching, that are on the fence, those Old Testament only, those Moorish brothers, other people that question Yahusha, understand. Yahusha is the man, y'all. In knowing who he is, we know who we are. Our identity is hid, y'all, within the person of Yahusha, the historical man that walked the earth. And knowing that man, we find our history, y'all. It's like Mufasa and Simba. When he looked into the reflection of himself in the water, he saw himself, but he saw his father, but he saw himself. He saw his father within him. Y'all gotta understand the beauty of that African mindset, that Ubuntu, I am because we are. I exist because of my forefathers. A tree with roots going back to those that came before them. Understand this concept. The nose that I have, the eyes that I have, the lips, the personality, my intellect, all of this comes from those that came before me. And giving back to the thing that gave me life is the purest form of worship of the Most High God. You cannot know yourself if you don't know those that came before you. Marcus Garvey said that a people without knowledge of self, without knowledge of their history, is like a tree planted without roots. It can only grow but to a certain extent because it is not rooted in everything that made you who you are. You have to know that. So understand, Christ is a chess master. Now, now this goes beyond the Son of Man. This goes beyond even Yahusha. This goes into the mind of the Father. The mind of the Father has played chess with the nations. Understand, Christ is a zip file, y'all. And, un, and, it, and if y'all are IT guys, y'all are IT girls, that y'all understand the whole concept of a uh, zip file. It's a condensed file because the, the magnitude of that file, you can't send it in an email, it's too big, you know, that kind of thing. So it's a way to condense a lot of information in a zip file that when you send it to your proper location, all you have to do is extract all those files and the magnitude of what it really is comes into play. Understand family, white Jesus Christianity is a zip file, but all of this is chess. Understand, Yahusha as the Messiah, the Mashiach knew that in him dying, he would spread the knowledge of the heritage, the history, Torah, to the diaspora of his people better even than in life. Y'all understand, y'all say, we're just gonna have a conversation because when we dealing with the tribe that Christ came from, all of this is gonna come into play. The Most High tucked away the truth within the age of the Gentiles. Y'all check this out. So basically what happened is the father took Christ Christ said that if I lay down my life, I can create that black revolution, that restoration of Zion better because when I die, I know that based on prophecy that Israel had to go through that final captivity. Now y'all, we talked about this. We talked about Daniel's statue. We talked about Daniel showing us that Esau would be the end of the world and that Christ and Jacob will be the beginning of the world to come. We saw that in the book of Ezra, where it says in 2nd Ezra chapter 6, verse 9, therefore Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that follows. Well, y'all check out all those other videos about Mystery Babylon, America, NATO, those 10 founding market European companies that are the 10 toes of, stat of, of, of the statue of Daniel, right? that that last empire would be this American NATO-led European regime that gets its power from the dragon, which is symbolic on at least four levels. Talking about Satan, that great red dragon, talking about the Edomite people manifested within the person of Herod, whose whole job was to war against Israel, who is that woman that gave birth to the man-child. Y'all read Revelation chapter 12, but basically that red dragon is Herod, these Edomite European Roman descendants that would empower this end time system, right? The toes of the statue of Daniel, the European Union, this fallen angel satanic system of critical race theory based society, right? That will rule in the very end of time before Yahusha comes back, regathers the 12 tribes, takes us back to Africa, establishes Zion as the world without end, and judges all the nations, right? So we understand prophetically that the European Roman descendants will be that last ruling empire. The tool that they used to conquer 
It's Christianity. Y'all understand. But all of this is just not checkers. The person of Jesus Christ is that blue peel, is that, is that zip file of heaven that allows the Gentiles to rule in this dispensation. But when you extract all the files historically of white Jesus, you find out that no white man named Jesus ever existed. His mama didn't call him Jesus. She would have called him Yahusha. Yah is salvation, right? He would have been a black ne Negro Judean that came as a deliverer, a anointed black nationalist to regather and save his people from all of their enemies historically, which was the Roman occupation, right? Regather all of their diaspora, free them, allow them to have autonomy in their land, free of Roman interference, to keep Torah and to be a light unto all nations. This is the historical gospel. So the historical man behind the myth is tucked away like in a zip file behind white Jesus. You have to extract the files using the Ruach HaKadosh, the spirit of the Most High that reveals all truth that goes into the deception and resurrects our identity within the lie. So with that being said, a lot of things that we've been taught, family, are from this Gentilic mindset, this European white Jesus mindset, right? We're not bashing the Bible. We're not bashing the scriptures. We're bashing the interpretation that has been forced on our people because this is the way the Gentiles rule. They took leaven, right? Mixed it within the truth of Yah's unleavened bread and created the Christian faith. It's a little truth mixed with a lot of falsehood to create deception. We saw this in the very beginning when Satan offered the tree or the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Christ came in Matthew chapter seven and said any tree that bears evil fruit is an evil tree. So even though that fruit was the knowledge of good and evil, right? That would make the entire fruit, the entire tree wickedness. The greatest deception is truth mixed with falsehood. That's what Christianity is. That's how that beast, the ten toes of the statue of Daniel, the red dragon, the Edomite European people, that's how they rule under the guise of God-fearing Christian nations, right? So we're going to deal with what tribe did Christ actually come from. And this is a lot, y'all. I might have to do a follow-up, make this a series. It's so many series, y'all, like, it's so many that I haven't even finished a lot of them. Like, I want to go deeper into the commandments, deeper into the wardrobe, the dietary, the feast days, all of that. I'm still working on that. And the Fallen Angel series, I still have a lot left with that. So it's just so much, y'all, when we're dealing with our history, it's so many topics and they're so vast. But in this video, this might be another series, dealing with Yahusha, the person of the historical Messiah. Y'all, they have lied so much about this man that it's ridiculous. And all of it comes from our people being destroyed for a lack of knowledge. We see this in Hosea chapter 4, verse 6, that my people perish for a lack of knowledge. Ignorance is not bliss. You can be punished for what you don't know. And that's why our people exist in the state we do. We do not read the scriptures. We do not study to show ourselves approved. And that's not bashing our people because there has been a lot of deception. The Europeans have twisted scriptures and done a lot of wickedness. But it is up to us to study that history book, which is the heritage of the black man. That Bible is the black man's history book, black queen's history book. And we have to study that thing to be able to understand the truth from the falsehood. The reason deception works is because we don't have a love for the truth to search out and prove all things, right? To study to show ourselves approved. So uh, before we get going too deep, I'm gonna go ahead and state my thesis on what tribe that Yahusha was from. And I'm gonna go through history, archeology, span and the scriptures to prove and validate the claim. And then I'm gonna show you why it is important to know what tribe that Christ came from and why it is so crucial to the Gentile rulership versus the African Zion restoration of Israel, the Moorish Israelites. This is all chestnut checkers. Every doctrinal element of Christianity, Roman Catholic Christianity, is to keep our people desensitized, having a spirit of effeminacy, not having that fight, not having the, the, the fangs of the canine. They have defanged us spiritually to not have that fight to stand up for our history because Christianity teaches neither Jew nor Greek. Israel's done away with whosoever will let them come. Their culture, you know, Torah, commandments, all that's done away with. 
it is trying to extract the man child from the woman. So now this is the thesis, y'all. We're gonna jump right into it. Y'all like, comment, share, subscribe. If y'all wanna donate, I'm gonna put that PO box up, that cash app. We could not do this without y'all support. I could not express that enough, y'all. Y'all support allows us to throw our entire selves at this and that kind of thing. So I'm gonna put that up for you guys. So my thesis, based on scripture, based on what the Most High is showing me, and y'all study these things for yourself. JB is just here to get y'all, get the ball rolling in your minds to search this stuff out for yourself, right? So the thesis is based on scripture. Yahusha is from the tribe of Ephraim within Judah. <laughs> I know a lot of y'all like, no, JB, what are you saying? This can't be true. So if somebody asks me, well, well, JB, what tribe is Christ from? Christ is from Ephraim and he's from Judah. What? What the? And I know a lot of y'all are confused. I, I searched this topic, y'all. I searched this out. I searched it on YouTube. There are no videos about it. So I just was like, man, what is going on? Nobody's talking about this. It is clear as day in the scriptures. When I show y'all these scriptures, when I show you David's lineage, which is linked to Jesse's lineage, we're gonna go to the book of Ruth, we're gonna go to 1 Samuel, we're gonna go through the history of the, of the cities that were given to each tribe in the promised land. I'm gonna cover it exhaustively. That's why I think this is gonna have to be a series because how many precepts I got? I'm looking at at least 15 scriptures and, a, and like at least five secondary sources. Y'all, it's a lot. So, let me explain this. Christ himself is a descendant of David. I am going to prove to you that David's lineage, David is an Ephraimite. The Bible says it clear as day in 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 12. I'm going to throw that out in case y'all are studying along, in case y'all want to go ahead and be looking ahead, because we're going to slow walk this thing. Now, knowing what tribe that Yahusha was from is the most powerful piece of information that you could ever acquire in this truth. I got to tell you, let me say that one more time. Knowing the person of Yahusha down to what tribe he came from is the most powerful piece of information within this truth. The scholars know, the theologians know, because every ounce of Roman Catholic Christianity hinges on the person of Jesus Christ, the person of Yahusha Hamashiach. And we're gonna deal with it. So basically, I'm just gonna give y'all a, a summary of how is this possible. What happened was Rachel, and I'm gonna go through the scriptures, the scriptures with y'all. We're gonna start in Genesis chapter, let me make sure I got it. Genesis chapter 35, uh, beginning at verse 18, when she was giving birth to Benjamin. Now, just to give y'all a breakdown, we as Hebrew Israelites claim to be Israelites based on being descendants of Jacob. So you have Noah's three sons. Now this is after the flood. Ham, Sham, and Japheth. Ham, Shem, and Japheth. Our people descend from Shem, right? The Bible, the Zonovan Bible Compact Dictionary, I can put that on the screen for you guys, says that Ham is the father of the dark races, not the Negroes. So we are the descendants of Shem. Japheth is the father of the European borders. Our people descend from Shem, descend from that son of Noah through Abraham, through Isaac, through Jacob. Now, Abraham had two sons, Isaac and Ishmael. Ishmael is the father of the ancient, the ancient Arabian uh, people, those that Muhammad during the time of Islam, those early followers, a lot of them were descendants of Ishmael. Now you had some other Israelite remnants scattered in between, but uh, Ishmael is the father of the Arab people, then you have Isaac, the younger son that was 13 years younger than uh, Ishmael. Abraham had Ishmael through Hagar, the bond servant, right? Isaac had two sons, the twins, Jacob and Esau. Now this is where we talked about the, the legend of the Jews, those two twins that were struggling in Rebecca's womb. And she was like, why is this going on? And the Most High reveals to her that two nations are in her womb and the whole earth would not be able to contain their seed. This is how Shem inhabited Japheth and inhabited Ham through Jacob and Esau. Jacob and Esau are the largest nations in the earth today. Jacob and Esau represent Jacob or Israel, the Negro Israelites scattered to the four corners of the earth, and Esau, the father of the European Edomites that are everywhere, right? So after, when we look at Jacob and Esau, Esau gave birth to Zepho and all these Roman, um, European people, 
Jacob was the father of 12 sons through four different women. Now we're gonna dive into this to discover what lineage Christ was from. What tribe was Christ from? Y'all hang on, get you a snack. Y'all drink you some coffee, do what you gotta do because we are about to go into this thing. So Jacob had four wives that he slept with. Well, really two wives and two of their hand servants, their handmaidens, right? Um, Rachel had a handmaiden and Leah had a handmaiden. Now, when you look at history, Jacob loved Rachel. Y'all understand, this is gonna connect to Joseph and Benjamin. Rachel is the mother of Joseph and Benjamin. Leah is the, is the mother of um, the first four sons, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah. Um, also, Leah's handmaiden, this is where you get into Dad, uh, Dan, Gad, Naphtali. Uh, Rachel's handmaiden, when you get into Issachar and these kind of things, we're gonna go through that. But understand, Jacob's love was with Rachel. Y'all understand, y'all can read your scriptures for yourself in the book of Genesis. We see that Jacob loved Rachel, Jacob wanted to marry Rachel, um, but Laban, his uncle, said that no man would give you the youngest daughter first. You have to get my oldest daughter. It was a right of the Israelite Hebrew culture, y'all have to know the culture, that the oldest daughter was to be betrothed first, right? So now Laban got a lot out of this deal because Jacob had the blessing of the Most High Yah on his life, y'all. That thing is physical. That thing is tangible. The nations know this. When the God of heaven is with you, it goes into every aspect of your life. Your health, your wealth, your finances, right? Generational wealth. Every patriarch, all of our forefathers were very wealthy people. Y'all know the history. This is a part of the birthright. Not just that. But the promise of the God of heaven being with your seed for eternity and raising you above all other nations, that was the birthright. And this tangible blessing was on the life of Jacob. And Laban could see it. And Laban said, man, I'm gonna get everything out of this Negro. So he worked Jacob, not just the amount of time to get Leah, but he worked him again to get Rachel. Then he worked him further. So it was a total of 21 years uh, seven years for uh, Leah, seven years for Rachel, uh, an additional seven years, 21 years that Jacob had to work under his uncle to be able to marry the love of his life, which was Rachel. Now, the Bible shows us in Genesis chapter 48, ch chapter 40, 49, that the Most High closed Rachel's womb. Rachel could not have any children, y'all. And we see that Leah was very fruitful. Leah gave birth to Reuben, Simeon, um, Levi, Judah, the first four sons. Now Judah comes from Leah, understand, this was the oldest daughter of Leah, the one that Jacob had to commit to, but his heart was with Rachel, who was the mother of Ephraim, right? Now, I'm just gonna put that out there. So Rachel's two sons, Joseph and Benjamin, Benjamin is where the Benjamites come from. Joseph is where Ephraim and Manasseh come from, those two tribes. So we see that the Most High closed Rachel's womb initially and opened Leah's womb, and she gave birth to the first four of the 12 sons that represents the 12 tribes of Israel. So African-American so-called, and all those scattered during the time of the transatlantic, we are descendants from the tribes in Africa, the Israelite tribes, that lived there that were scattered everywhere. All of those Israelites were scattered to the four corners of the earth. You have a lot still in the African continent, but the 1619 transatlantic sent a lot of us to various countries in Europe, on the islands, um, Jamaica, Haiti, everywhere. The Americas, Canada, Europe, just uh, Trinidad, uh, the island St. Vincent, all of this, Barbados, our people have been scattered everywhere, y'all. So. We are the descendants of 12 tribes, which are the 12 sons of Jacob, having the 12 sons through four women. Leah is the first four, then you had her handmaiden, then you had Rachel's handmaiden, and eventually the father opened Rachel's womb. Now, when the father finally opened Rachel's womb, she gave birth to Joseph and Benjamin. Benjamin is the last son born, and Joseph is the next to the last. So they were the youngest sons, right? Now, we're gonna go to Genesis and we're gonna see the territories that were given to each tribe. I'm gonna break this thing all the way down to prove to y'all 
that ethnically speaking, Christ was an Ephraimite. What is up Zion Dynasty? I thought it would be better if I showed you guys my screen. I'm gonna show you all these precepts as y'all can see. Look at all them scriptures up. We are about to exhaustively study. And the reason I'm showing y'all what, what tribe did Yeshua come from, y'all don't, y'all understand. It is so important because as Colossians 3, 3 says, and I'm gonna go to that. Let me go to that. I forgot I got the screen up. All oh, praises. Let me pull this up so you guys can see. As Colossians 3, 3, and y'all, I love the King James Bible online. It has the 1611 version, which is those books that you'll find in the Sefer or 1611 King James, all those books that were removed. So in Colossians 3, 3, it says, for you are dead and your life is hid within Hamashiach in Elohim. So our lives, family, are hid in the zip file of knowing the historical Yeshua. Y'all, please catch that. Catch that in the spirit. I pray the Most High opens y'all's eyes to see that. Christ is like a zip file. He who was alive and is dead and behold is alive forevermore. These are three ages. This is when he was alive, when our people were a nation, when we were Israel in our land, right? When he died, that ushered in the age of the Gentiles, them using his death, recreating his life in the form of a white Jesus construct. Then his life again after death is the resurrection of the dry bones of Ezekiel. The resurrection of Israel when Christ returns, takes us back to that land and rules and Israel is restored to rulership world without end. So y'all understand, our life is hid within knowing who Yahusha is. So now let's go back to Genesis. So in Genesis, we see what happened to Rachel. Rachel died giving birth to Benjamin, right? She had hard labor. It was an intense event. And in her dying, she was buried in a specific location. This is why the area of Bethlehem did not belong to the tribe of Judah. I repeat, and I know Micah 5 too, we gonna deal with it. Y'all understand, everything that I teach y'all, I take this stuff seriously. I study this stuff. The area of Bethlehem Ephrata, Ephraim, did not belong to the tribe of Judah, and I'm gonna show y'all that through the scriptures. So first, let's look at Genesis chapter 35. Let's scroll on down, family. I enjoy this, oh yeah. So let's begin at verse 16. And they journeyed from Bethel, right? And there was only a little way to come to Ephrath. Ephrath is Bethlehem Ephrath, or uh, Bethlehem Ephrathah. All of that is the same word. Ephrath, Ephrathah, all of that is Bethlehem. And Rachel gave birth, and she travailed and had hard labor. Verse 17, and it came to pass when she was in hard labor that the midwife said unto her, Fear not. Thou shalt have this son. Even though she was getting ready to die, the midwife said the child can be born. Which is like, it's, it's, it's a happy event, y'all, but it's terrifying that in the midst of this death, life is being resurrected at the same time. This is how Benjamin was born. And it came to pass, as her soul was leaving the earth, for she died, family, that she called him Benoni. And Benoni, Ben is uh, Hebrew for son of. So Benai also is a variation of son of. Like Beni Ephraim, Benai Ephraim, Benai is son of, or Benai, or Benoni, all of this is son of. Benoni in the Hebrew, Ben being the root meaning son, Onai, son of sorrow. But his father called him Ben Jamin, son of the right hand. Because Rachel, y'all, she was in bad shape giving birth to Benjamin, and she almost pronounced a curse in her death, saying, You are the son of my sorrow because she was dying even though it was her heart to give birth to another son. Joseph's name in Hebrew, Yosef, means Yah shall add, shall add another. Now this is prophetic speaking of another son. And this was given to Rachel, but she died. Now a lot of scholars believe this is prophetic talking about Messiah ben Yosef. Now y'all this gets into a whole nother thing, but y'all stay, stay with the journey. So the father changed his name, changed ben Onai's name from son of sorrow to Benjamin, son of the right hand. And Rachel died and was buried in the way to Ephrath, which is Bethlehem. So family, y'all stay with it. Now we're in Genesis 35, 19. It shows us that Rachel was buried in Bethlehem Ephrath, right? That's where she died. That's where she had the hard labor. This is why Bethlehem did not belong to Judah. 
Y'all, this is so deep. I hope y'all catch it. To this day, the Ish people do not have control over Bethlehem. Y'all Google it. It blew my mind when I saw it. The Ish people had to cede Bethlehem to the Palestinians. Y'all got to know how powerful. Even though the Most High has given that red dragon, Satan has rulership over the whole earth. He told Yahusha that if you bow down and worship me, I will give you all the earth because it is given into my power. But even with all that, there is an area of land that does not belong to Satan. It is Bethlehem, y'all. Even the Ish people at best, let's say the Ish people were Judah. Judah does not have control over Bethlehem. There is one lineage that has control over that lineage. And y'all got to catch this. I know I'm preaching. But understand, when all of y'all do your DNA, everything that I do on this channel, when I do the African ancestry, when I do all of this DNA, my true ancestry, 23andMe, is to show you all yourselves. Everything that I find in my DNA, you all will find when you do yours. There were specific tribes that were taken in the transatlantic. So everything that I'm finding, you guys will find because we're all the same people. And all of y'all can attest, a lot of y'all that have done your DNA, you find your Ruba somewhere in your DNA. You find it in your African ancestry. You might find your Ruba and Igbo in your 23andMe. You might find your Ruba on your My True Ancestry when it says your Ruba plus our A lot of y'all are like, yeah, yeah, I've been seeing your Ruba all over the place. It's because that's who we are, family. We are the Ephraimite Moors. And the power of this is this is the lineage that Yahusha came from. And y'all, is so much in that, but I got to keep going with the precepts. Now, let's go to Micah, because a lot of y'all are looking at, thinking about Micah. Let's go ahead and jump to Micah. Now, Micah chapter 5, verse 1 and 2, we're going to read that thing. Now, gather thyself in troops, O daughter of troops. He hath laid siege against us. They shall smite the judge of Yasharal with a rod upon the cheek. Now, this is getting into Christ. When he died, they smote him, they smote him with a rod and said, Prophesy unto us, O king of the Jews. They mocked him. So, this is a messianic prophecy. But thou, Bethlehem Ephrata, though thou be least among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall come he, or, or yet out of thee shall he come forth unto him, or unto me, that is to be ruler of Israel, whose going forth has been of old, even from everlasting. Y'all got that. Now we got to deal with this. CJB, it says that he shall come out of Judah. Now, y'all, let me drop a nugget that is clear, but it's subtle. Yes, Ephrata is within the borders of Judah, but Bethlehem did not belong to Judah. Y'all got to catch this. So even when the scripture says that Christ would come out of Bethlehem or come out of Judah, this is a mystery. Y'all think back to that zip file that I told y'all. The Most High has created a carefully concealed message of our identity that he has deceived all the nations with. The truth is that even though he came out of Judah, he didn't come out of the tribe of Judah. Bethlehem was strategically located in the center of the area that was given to Judah, but it did not belong to them. So y'all can see how deep this is. What are you saying, JB? There was a town that was in Judah that didn't belong to them? Oh, yes. That's how the Most High could say, yes, Christ came out of Judah physically. Yeah, he came out of Bethlehem, which is located within Judah. But that town did not have people that were Judites, according to their blood living there. This is the mystery. And I hope y'all catch it. We're going to break this thing down further. Now, if you look at Joshua, y'all understand, Joshua chapter 15 gives us every city that was given to the children of Judah. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm finna prove this thing. And I'm gonna show you, Bethlehem Ephrata is not listed as being inhabited by the children of Judah. What, JB? Why would the Most High pit a city in Judah that did not have Judah people by blood living there? So that you could say Christ is from Judah, but at the same time, when you dig deeper, he was from a family of Ephraimites that lived within Judah because Bethlehem Ephrata, as we saw in Genesis 35, is where Rachel died giving birth to Benjamin. Rachel was the mother of Joseph as well. And Joseph, his descendants, the Ephraimites, asked Moses for if they could have this city within the borders of Judah because their foremother was buried there. And y'all take notes. 
take notes, take notes. And y'all replay this video. So let me, let me break it back down again. So in Genesis 35, Rachel dies in Bethlehem, giving birth to Benjamin. We see this in verse 19, right? So she dies in Bethlehem. This gives a rallying cry to her future descendants that want that area. They want that town. So even when Moses gives Judah that entire surrounding district, Judah agrees with Moses that this one heartbeat city that would be the least of Judah because Judites did not dwell there, they agreed to give that area to Ephraim because Rachel, the mother of Joseph, who was the father of Ephraim, died there. Now y'all take notes now. So in Micah 5, 2, then when it says, but thou Bethlehem Ephratah, though you be little, people don't even esteem y'all as anything. They despise you all, if anything, because you're not truly Judah. Though you be little among the thousands of Judah, all the other cities of Judah, yet out of you shall come forth unto me, says the Most High Yah, he that is to be ruler of Yashorael, whose going forth has been from old, even from everlasting. Now, this is the prophecy that Christians use to say that out of Judah, the Messiah comes, which is a true statement. If I say that my kids live in, in this house, and I say that out of this house shall come forth a savior, right? I could be talking about any of my kids. I cannot, so you have to understand that that's a true statement factually, but it's a deeper mystery. Now y'all catch that, that even though Christ came out of Judah, he came out of a city that was within Judah, but the ethnicity of those people were Ephraimites that lived in Bethlehem because Rachel died there giving birth to Benjamin. Now let's go deeper. So back to Joshua chapter 15. In Joshua 15, we see every, every family, every city that was given to child, the children of Judah when Moses under Joshua conquered the promised land. So what happened, family, was our people had been in Egypt for 400 years. Moses comes to deliver Zion, but he did not finish the work. Yeshua or Joshua, now y'all remember that Joshua's name is Yeshua in the Hebrew, the exact same name of Yahusha in the New Testament. Y'all got to stay with me with this. So Joshua led the children of Israel into the promised land. Moses was not allowed to because he smote the rock when the Most High said, just speak to it. And to Moses' credit, them Negro Israelites drove that man crazy. They was in there crying about where we gonna get our food from, where we gonna get our water from, just like our people do today when they don't trust the Most High to lead us back to the promised land. They were complaining, they were bickering, and Moses got tired. He was a human being just like us, y'all. Even through all the mighty things that Moses did, he was flesh and blood and had a moment of vulnerability, but the Most High said, Moses, my servant, I'm not gonna allow you to lead them into the promised land because you disobeyed me. So his protege was Osi of the tribe of Ephraim. Moses added Yah in front of Joshua's name, which is Yahusha or Yahushua, right? This is the exact same name of Christ. How do I know this? I'm gonna show y'all. Let me show y'all real quick. I know this is a lot. Y'all take notes. This is gonna be a multiple part series going into the lineage of Christ. Let's go to Acts chapter seven. Now, in Acts chapter seven, we see the word Jesus used when it is really talking about Joshua. Let's find it. Now, let's look at Acts chapter seven, beginning at verse 44. It says, our fathers had the tabernacle of witness in the wilderness, right? As he had appointed, speaking unto Moses that he should make it after the fashion that was shown to him. So Moses had a vision of making a people a mighty nation. This was symbolic in the tabernacle that he created with the outer, or the outer court, the inner court, and the Holy of Holies. All of this was symbolic for the Most High's relationship with Israel. But the people couldn't handle that revelation. Now, y'all, that's a nugget for y'all. David catches the revelation when the Father says, I don't want to I don't want to dwell in a temple made with hands. My heart was to dwell in the hearts of my people. So Moses was shown this revelation, but manifested it through the physical tabernacle, which was the place of worship with the outer court, inner court, holy of holies, with the holy veil, right? That the children, the high priest would go in, make sacrifice for the people, make offering for their sins to justify the Most High's relationship with his people Israel. Let's look at verse 45, which also our fathers that came after, now who is this? This is the generation after Moses. 
brought in with Jesus into the possession of the Gentiles, whom God drove out before the face of our fathers unto the days of David. Wait a second, unto the days of David? That means this is before David. Like we said, this is after Moses. So what's going on? Joshua drove in, drove out all of the Hittites, the Jebusites, the Amorites, drove all of these nations out from before our fathers when he possessed the land of Canaan, the promised land. But we see in the Greek that Joshua's name is transliterated to Jesus because it's the same name in the Hebrew. Why do I bring that up? Y'all, this is some heavy stuff. Y'all take notes. There is a lot of truth in the name of our forefathers. I'm going to show y'all that Mary, she was the first cousin of Elizabeth. This is what I've been trying to tell y'all. Elizabeth was the wife of Zechariah, the high priest, which makes him a son of Aaron. So if Elizabeth is the first cousin of Mary and Elizabeth is a Levite, Mary was a Levite. That's the first witness. The second witness is Mary's name in the Hebrew is Miriam. Miriam was the sister of Moses and Aaron, and all of them are children of the Levites, children of the tribe of Levi. So the name holds the mystery. The Quran verifies this. The Hebrew scriptures go into great lengths about Mary's lineage going back to the priest, going back to the daughters of Aaron. When you see her called of the lineage of Judah, y'all have to know history. When you look at history, you see that the southern kingdom of Judah was not just the tribe of Judah. Y'all understand? The southern kingdom of Judah was the tribe of Judah, Benjamin, but not just that, the Levites, because the Levites were mingled within both kingdoms. So Mary could have been of the tribe of the Levites or the tribe of Levi, but be referred to as Judah. This is uh, easily to understand. Y'all got to know the history. So we know that she could have been called Judah because she was actually a Levite that dwelt in Judea, right? Her first cousin was Elizabeth, the wife of the high priest. And in the Hebrew, her name is Miriam, which goes back to her Levite ancestry. Now, when we look at Joseph, I'm going to show y'all that David was an Ephraimite. Joseph's name has a lot of layers to it. Joseph's name goes back to Joseph, the patriarch who was the father of Ephraim. Jesse was an Ephraimite that lived in Bethlehem because Bethlehem was the place that Rachel died and the children of Judah agreed with Moses to give them that land, give Ephraim that city that was within Judah. So they came out of Judah, but their tribe was Ephraim. And I know it's deep, y'all. So in Judges 15, it says, this then was the lot. These were the cities that were given to the tribe of the children of Judah by their families, even to the border of Edom, the wilderness of Zin. Southward was the uttermost part of the south coast. So we see that Edom bordered Judah. Now this sets the stage for a lot of Edomite influence within the lineage of Judah. That's a big thing. Now y'all already know about the Herodian dynasty, Herod, Agrippa, all of them were Edomites that lived in Judea right? This goes back to uh, John Hycranus. John Hycranus converted all those Edomites to Torah. This could be looked at as a good thing or a snare because now our enemies knew our history and were able to eventually perform a swap. But he didn't think about that during that time because Israel was meant to be a light unto all nations. So he was just trying to convert the entire earth unto our culture so that the whole world would be under Torah. But we see over time, the Edomites had great influence in Judah. The Pharisees, the Sadducees, Herod, a lot of these were Edomites that knew our culture. This goes back to this event where Judah's borders bordered Edom. Now let's keep reading. And their south border was from the shore of the Salt Sea, from the bay that looked southward. Now I'm gonna scroll down where it actually gets into those cities and names all of the cities that were given to the children of Judah. Now. Verse 20, this is the inheritance of the tribe of the children of Judah, according to their families. And the uttermost cities of the tribe of the children of Judah toward the coast of Edom, because Edom bordered Judah's uh, territory, southward were Kabzil and Idar, Jegur and Kina, Demona, right? This is the Demona, our Demona brothers that live there to this day, Adada, Kidesh, Hezor, Ithnan, Ziph, 
Telim, Beolis, Hazor, Hadata, Karyoth. Now, when you get into Judas Iscariot, this, I'm telling y'all, Judas was an Edomite, y'all. It's so much knowledge I can give y'all. I, I got to make this a series. I need y'all to trust the Most High for me. A lot of y'all have subscribed because you see that on this channel, I give y'all truth. I give y'all receipts, right? I know a lot of things I say are hard to be understood, but y'all look up this stuff for yourself. I'm telling you, the virgin birth, all of this stuff is a well-orchestrated deception, and I can prove it for y'all. And it's a lot of precepts. I'm going to be covering this stuff on every daily lesson, right? Now, as we see, Cariot, this is Judas Iscariot. Judas, their surname went back to where they come from. Like if I say my name is Ben Zion, right? I come from Zion, right? A lot of the patriarchs named themselves Ben, their forefathers. Like when we see Yahusha, called Yahusha Ben Yosef, his father was Joseph. They carried in their surnames, their pedigree, the where they came from. So Judas Iscariot was Judas from Keriat, which was the southern city that bordered Edom. And a lot of Edomites eventually came into Judea through Keriat. Judas was a Edomite. And this explains how he was that devil that Christ prophesied would betray him. It was Edomites infiltrating Yah's people to get Yahusha crucified. Y'all, this stuff is powerful. And Hezron, which is Hezor, Amam, Shima, Molede, uh, Hazur Gada, Heshman, Beth Palet, Hazur Shual, Bersheba, Bizjosha, Bala, Iam, Ezim, Etolad, Chesil, Horma, Ziklad, Madmana, Sansana, Lebayoth, and all the way down, I'm just gonna start showing y'all, Eshtol, Zariath, Ashna, um, nowhere do you see, now I'm, a, I'm trying to take it slow because I don't want y'all to think I'm sliding the hand or some weird stuff, Tapuam, Enam, Jarmuth, Adula, Saka, Ezika, now y'all look carefully, Sharam, Adyath, Jigur, uh, Jidarathma, you don't see a B nowhere, Zinan, Hadasha, Bigdala, uh, Dilian, Mespa, Joktil, Lakish, Baskath, Eglan, uh, Kaban, Lahmam, Kitlish, uh, Gerdorath, Bethdegon, Naama, Makade, 16 cities with their villages. Libna, Ethner, Ashan. Now, this gets into the Ashan. Um, now, 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 the Ashan, there is an Ashan that goes back to the priest. But like I told y'all, they had certain cities within each tribe that were refuge cities and cities for the Levites because you had Levites throughout all the tribes. Now, that's a whole other lesson. Jiptat, Ashna, Nezim. This gets into the Ashanti. That's why I brought that up. The Ashanti that are in West Africa to this day that are linked to the children of Israel through the daughters of Aaron. So that proves to y'all, I'm telling you, you could have Levites that were part of Judah, that were a part of all the tribes, really. Now, Kila, Akzib, Marash, Ekron, um, Geza, the mountains of Shamir, Jatir, Saka, Dana, Kir, uh, Kirjathsana, uh, they all look, Goshen, Holland, Gila, Duman, Eshin. Nowhere do you see Bethlehem. I'm gonna keep scrolling. Now you see Bethanath, you see Beth Zir, so I can let y'all see Beth Rabba, Kirdes Jerem, Rabba, Jezreel. Y'all look carefully. As for the Jebusites that inhabited Jerusalem, the children of Judah could not drive them out, but the Jebusites dwell with the children of Ju Jeru or Judah at Jerusalem until this day. So y'all, we see eventually they do take Jerusalem. This becomes a part of Judah. But nowhere do you see Bethlehem. This is an exhaustive list of every town that was given to the tribe of Judah. I repeat, when you talk about Bethlehem Ephrata, Bethlehem was a town within Judah's borders, but it did not belong to the children of Judah. So the people that dwelt there were not ethnically Judaites or Judahites. They did not ethnically belong to Judah, but they dwelt within the Judah territory, right? Because Bethlehem was situated within. Now we see this explicitly. So now let's go to Genesis 48, and we're going to look at the blessing that's on the life of Joseph. Boy, I got to tell y'all, and I need y'all to catch this. Okay, in Genesis 48, we see when Jacob blesses Joseph's seed. Y'all don't know the love that Jacob has for Joseph. I got to tell y'all. Because this is the love the father has for the ten tribes because it's embodied within Joseph. Ephraim was the noble family of the northern kingdom. This is Africa. 
Afriyat. This is the Wifran, Ifran. The northern kingdom of Israel is Africa. I repeat, you heard it from your boy JB. I ain't found no other videos willing to deal with this. And y'all, it was a lot of courage. It takes a lot of courage to deal with some of this stuff because it comes against hundreds of thousands of years of tradition. Y'all understand? So, so family, it is so much within this when we talk about the love that Jacob has for Joseph, y'all. I'm telling you, I showed y'all in the last lesson, and I'm gonna show some clips within to prove to you that the name Africa is a Shemitic term. This was not the term that the Hamites called that border when it was exclusively given to the children of Ham. From the beginning of time, we see that area known to known as Ethiopia or Cush. And from antiquity, you see Ham's borders called Akebulan. Any students of Pan-African history will tell you, Akebulan is the motherland. This is what Ham's borders was called. Ham in the Hebrew is Kam. This is where you get Kamet or Kemetic, right? So Ham has a ka, ka sound in the Hebrew. This is where you get Kamet or Kemet or Kemetic brothers, right? Because they know the history of the continent. Goes back to Ham's descendants. Ham was the father of Cush, who is Ethiopia, the father of Misraim, who is Egypt. This is why the continent, when it was under Ham, was known as the land of Canaan, uh, the land of Comet, or the land of Ethiopia, right? Now, when you look at the term Africa, Ka is a Roman suffix for the people of Afri or Ifran, right? Now, I showed y'all in the Jewish virtual library. I showed you guys in the Tel Aviv Jerusalem library that they all know about the Judeo history of Africa and the Afriat Ephraimite family. And I showed you guys that on a map, Upper Egypt is at the bottom of the map and Lower Egypt is at the top. The same with Nubia. Upper Nubia is on the bottom of our map and Lower Nubia is at the top. Edom has changed the whole world, y'all. The maps and everything. Africa, that would have made Africa the Northern Kingdom from where the Northeast Africa region of the land of Israel is, all praises to the Most High Yah. This is why you find our forefathers so heavily within Afrata. Uh, when you look at Morocco, the Ephrati, the uh, David Ha'afrati, El Kahina, all of this was because a lot of Northern Kingdom from the fall of the Assyrians went to that area of Africa and created the Northern Kingdom of Israel. We see that the Moroccan Wifran people in the Jewish virtual library and that kind of thing, this people go back thousands of years, y'all. These are the people that the Islamicized Arabs and some lost tribe Israelites came when they came into that continent, they recruited these Amazaic, Berber, Wifran, Ephrati people to create the Moorish Empire. So we are descendants of these Moorish Ephraimites family. Now, back to Joseph. This all goes back to the love that the father has for Africa. Y'all, there's so many layers to this thing. Because Joseph is the father of Ephraim and Manasseh. The birthright, y'all hear me? The birthright was given to Joseph. And y'all don't know how powerful the namesake was in ancient Hebraic culture. When the name, when the birthright was given to a people, this was an everlasting covenant that the creator made that a family would never cease to exist. That no matter how much genocide, how much history changing, our people would always overcome. We are the descendants of the Northern Kingdom, the so-called lost tribes. What does this have to do with Judah, JB? I thought we was Judah. I thought we was the tribe of Judah. I understand. Even though our lineage comes out of Judah, Bethlehem was situated directly within the providences of Judah, but did not belong to them. Belonged to the children of Ephraim because Rachel died there. And I'm going to show y'all that in the New Testament and everything. So let's read. And it came to pass after these things. Now I'm going to show y'all how much the father loved Joseph, how much Jake, Jacob loved Joseph in Genesis 48. That one told Joseph, behold, your father is sick. And Joseph took his two sons, Manashe. Now the Ebo already talked about the Manashe dwelling within the Ebo and Ephraim among the Yoruba. Now, so Jacob, so Joseph took his two sons, the oldest Manasseh and the youngest Ephraim. And one told Jacob, behold, your son Yosef, or Yahweh cometh unto thee. Now, the way we get Yahweh Shai, that is old Paleo Hebrew. So Joseph in the traditional Hebrew is Yosef 
but in the archaic Hebrew is Yah Yah uh, is Yahwasap, right? Which means Yah shall add. So it was told to Jacob that Yahwasap or Joseph Yosef was coming unto him, and Israel strengthened himself. Now you see, when Jacob was getting ready to die, his name is Jacob. But when he's getting ready to bless Joseph, it says Israel strengthened himself. We know Jacob's name was changed to Israel when he wrestled with the angel. So Israel, which means the anointed presence of Yahweh with Jacob, is the manifestation of Jacob that is dealing with Joseph that sat upon his bed. And Jacob said to Joseph, Yah Almighty El Shaddai appeared unto me at Luz in the land of Canaan and blessed me and said unto me, Behold, I will make you so fruitful and multiply you and I will make of thee a multitude of people and will give this land the seed of Can the land of Canaan to thy seed after thee for an everlasting possession. Grab hold of this Zion. The land of Africa, the land of Canaan, Northeast Africa, belongs to the Afriat, the Ephraim, the Joseph, the Israelite seed as an everlasting possession. This is why them Khazars trying to get out of Dodge because they know what your boy is giving y'all. Y'all grab this, all right? That land belongs to our people forever. The most high creator of heaven and the earth says an everlasting possession. Verse five, and now thy two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, which were born unto thee in the land of Egypt. So Jacob is telling Joseph, those two boys that you had before I came unto thee, the boys that you had in Egypt are gonna be mine. Just like Reuben and Simeon, these two shall be mine. Y'all gotta catch this prophetically. We see Joseph, the only individual patriarch of the 12 sons of Jacob, he is the only one that became two distinct tribes. <laughs> that we see in the end in the book of Revelation that it says the tribe of Joseph and the tribe of Manasseh. Now, why does it say the tribe of Joseph instead of saying the tribe of Ephraim? We're gonna see that Joseph gives the birthright or Jacob gives the birthright to Ephraim. Jacob loves Joseph so much, y'all, that his life experience, he takes his life experience and puts it upon Joseph's seed. What am I talking about? He swaps his hands, y'all. Let's read it. I'm going to let y'all read it. And now thy two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, which were born unto you in the land of Egypt, Joseph, my son, before I came unto you in Egypt, they are going to be my sons. So Joseph, your sons are going to be mine, Ephraim and Manasseh. And thy issue, which comes out of them, that's going to belong to Joseph. But these two are going to be mine. Now, this is an African custom, y'all gotta understand, where the grandfather can name himself within the grandchildren. Y'all hear me? Because the blessing on Reuben and Simeon was really a curse because Reuben slept with Jacob's handmaiden and Simeon was so cruel that he went and killed a whole people because of what they did to his sister. Now, y'all, you can justify it, but Jacob told them not to be hot-headed, not to be hot-tempered, that the Most High Yah would defend them, right? But instead, they went and killed all that civilization and made the, land, the name of Israel stink among the nations. So Reuben was disqualified from the birthright. Simeon was disqualified from the birthright. We're going to see that Levi was given the priesthood. So he did not get the birthright. Judah is where people say, okay, yeah, Judah got the birthright because he was the next one in line. Judah was the next one in line physically. <laughs> because he was of the seed of the woman, Leah, that was really a legal choice because Jacob really didn't love her the way he loved Rachel. But we see Rachel give birth to Joseph and Benjamin. And we're going to see Joseph gets the birthright through Ephraim and Manasseh. Now let's keep reading. And thy issue, everything that comes out after, your, after Ephraim and Manasseh is going to be yours, uh, Joseph, and shall be called after the name of their brethren, in their inheritance according to the land that they're given and as for me when i came from padan rachel died by me in the land of canaan wait a second rachel already died in the promised land there was an area <laughs> where israel's lineage was already established this is an eternal inheritance because this is before y'all take notes this is before israel fully possesses the promised land that rachel was buried in canaan and that area, which is eternal, 
which had the remains of Rachel, is Bethlehem Ephrata in the way when yet there was a little well a little while left to Ephrath. And I buried her there in the way of Ephrath, which is Bethlehem. And Israel beheld Joseph's sons and said, Who are these? Y'all got to catch this in the spirit. Israel or Jacob is recounting that his love, Rachel, died in Bethlehem, and he's getting ready to bless Joseph's sons. We're going to see Ephraim ends up getting Bethlehem, which is where Christ came out of Judah from, but the lineage is really Ephraim in disguise. Y'all watch this. And Joseph said unto his father, well, these are my two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, whom the Most High Yah hath given me in the land of my captivity. Now that gets into a lot of stuff. Joseph was sold into his, he was sold into captivity. Y'all catch this. The stone which the builders rejected has become the head of the corner. A lot of people think that's talking about Judah. Judah's name means praise in the Hebrew. But understand, this is not the testimony of Yahusha. This is not the testimony of the Messiah. The Messiah was rejected by his brethren. I'm telling y'all, there are so many layers connecting Joseph with Yahusha. And when you look at the lineage, Christ himself descended from Ephraim, descended from Joseph. Now y'all just keep reading. Now the eyes of Israel were dim and he could not really see. And Israel, oh, and he brought them near, his two sons, Joseph brought Ephraim and Manasseh, and he kissed them and embraced them. And Israel said unto Joseph, man, I didn't even think to see your face, my son. And behold, Elohim has showed me your descendants. J Jacob thought he would die before seeing his son because he thought his son was dead. But his son lived, y'all got to hear this. His son lived even in the land of captivity. This is the testimony of our people. Y'all, we fit the prophecies of Joseph so well, it is scary, right? The, the testament of Joseph, I'm going to do a video on that, says that, lo, I am sold into captivity. We see that Judah and his brethren betrayed Joseph and thought he was dead. This is the testimony of Yahusha, who was raised from the dead, as it were, to save his people. Not only is this the testimony of Yahusha, this is the testimony of the so-called lost tribes, which we are the descendants of, those Nigerian Israelites, those Ebo and Yoruba Ephraimites that were sold into captivity by Judah. Now this gets into the Ish people, this gets into Edom mixing with Judah, y'all are so many layers. So Jacob says, I thought you were dead, my son, but the Most High has raised you up even in captivity and made you the head of the corner in Egypt. And lo, Elohim has shown me also your seed. And Joseph brought them out from between his knees. They were little boys. And he bowed himself with his face to the dirt before his father. That's the respect that we have for our elders, for our fathers. This is an African connotation. We have the grandfather claiming the life of the grandchildren to bless them with a prophecy of the elders. And you have the young men bowing before their fathers. This is an Imuntu. This is an Afriyat mindset. Y'all hear me? And Yosef, or Yawasak, brought them out from between his knees and he bowed himself with his face to the dirt before their father. And Yosef took them both Ephraim in his right hand toward Israel's left and Manasseh in his left hand towards Israel's right. Now why did he do this? Because the birthright was supposed to go to Manasseh because he was the firstborn. Y'all we're going to see the love that Jacob has for Joseph. That the experience that Jacob went through and being the younger son but receiving the birthright is the legacy that's only passed to Joseph. So y'all got to catch this. The name of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob was passed to Joseph. So he is the Elohim of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph, even Ephraim. This is the eternal name of the father. Y'all check this. So Joseph tried to get Ephraim in the left hand of his father and Manasseh in the right. And Israel stretched out his hand, his right hand, and laid it upon Ephraim's head, who was the younger. Now, this is the same thing that Jacob went through. He had received the blessing even though he was the youngest son. This heritage was passed to one of the tribes of Israel, i.e. Joseph. And his left hand upon Manasseh's head, guiding his hands knowingly. He knew what he was doing. Now, the Bible told us, y'all check this, that Jacob's eyesight was failing. So Joseph thinks he made a mistake. And he blessed Joseph and said, Elohim, before whom my forefathers Abraham and Isaac did walk, and the God which fed me all the days of my life unto this day, the angel that redeemed me from all evil, 
bless these children and let my name be named on them. Y'all, we got to put some respect on Joseph's name. This is the fear that white people have. This is the fear that Edom, the Ish Judah-ish people, this is the fear that they have. That that ancient kingdom, northern kingdom, Ephrati, Ephraim, the 10 so-called lost tribes, rise up and reclaim northern kingdom Africa. This is the fear that they have. Because he says about Ephraim and Manasseh, he says, let my name be named on them. And the name of my forefathers, Abraham and Yitzhak, and let them grow into a multitude in the midst of the earth. And when Yahweh Sap saw that his father laid his right hand on Ephraim, it displeased him. He said, don't do this to my firstborn father. That's, that's disdainful for the firstborn to not get the blessing because he knew about his grandfather Esau and how that happened. And he said, no, this means Manasseh did something wrong. This displeases me, father. And he held up his father's hand to remove it from Ephraim's head and put it on Manasseh, his firstborn. And Joseph said unto his father, not so, my father, for this is truly the firstborn Manasseh. Put thy right hand upon his head. And his father refused and said, I already know, son. I'm not blessing Reuben and Simeon like this. I'm not giving this firstborn blessing to Manasseh, my son. I know it. I know it. He also shall become a great people. So it's not a knock at Manasseh. And he also shall be great. But truly his younger brother, but not Ephraim of the tribe of Joseph, shall be greater than he. And his seed shall become a multitude of nations. And he blessed them that day, saying, In thee shall Israel bless. The name of Israel is only on the northern kingdom. We see this in scripture that the ten tribes were referred to as the kingdom of Israel. The kingdom of Judah was the southern kingdom. The name of Israel would always be with the ten tribes. Y'all hear me? God, he said about Ephraim and Manasseh, he said, Elohim, make thee as Ephraim and Manasseh. And he set Ephraim before his older brother Manasseh. And Israel said unto Joseph, Behold, I die. But go, but, but the Most High Yah shall be with you and bring you into the promised land. Now we see that Joshua, who was a descendant of Joseph, actually leads them into the promised land. This was the birthright that was on Ephraim. Moreover, I have given to thee one portion above your brethren, because the tribe of Joseph would be two tribes. So two of the twelve tribes are actually Joseph's seed, Ephraim and Manasseh. He gave him one portion above the brethren are the birthright, which I took out of the hand of the Amorite with my sword and with my bow. Now, y'all, I'm telling y'all, it's so much in that chapter, y'all. Now, let's go to Genesis chapter 49. This is where a lot of people think that, well, it's Judah. Judah's the one that the Messiah comes from. Let's read it, y'all. Beginning at verse 8. Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Now, Judah was beloved of the other patriarchs. Judah was the one that led his brethren and protected Joseph from being killed by his brethren. Thy hand shall be in the neck of all your enemies. So Judah was this warrior. He defended Israel while Joseph was thought to be there. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Now y'all look at this. A lot of Christians say, yeah, this is Judah. This is the Messiah. Judah is a lion's whelp. From thy prey, my son, thou art gone up. He stooped down. He couched as a lion. As an old lion who shall arouse him now y'all look at verse 10 the scepter shall not depart from judah nor a lawgiver from between his feet a levite until shiloh come and unto him shall the gathering of the people be now we see a transition of authority so judah stood as the leader of the patriarchs joseph stood as a leader of of uh the gentiles as a worldwide leader during the time of the famine we see them square off when Joseph says the giant get no food, food until you give me Benjamin, right? So we see this square down. Now, Judah was beloved of all the other sons of Jacob. Y'all understand? His name means praise in the Hebrew. That's why it says, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Joseph was the stone that the builders rejected. Well, JB, how come it says Judah is a lion's whelp and, and, and thou art gone up and couched down? Isn't this a messianic prophecy? Doesn't it say the scepter shall not depart from Judah? Isn't this talking about kingship? Like I told y'all, Judah was the territory, or Judah's borders was the territory that Bethlehem was situated in. So even when it says that a lawgiver, a king shall not depart from Judah, 
the blessing was on Judah because Judah was the womb that had within her the seed of Ephraim. Because Bethlehem Ephratah was situated within the borders of Judah. I showed y'all that in Joshua 15. I showed y'all that. This is what Micah 5.2 is talking about. I showed y'all in Genesis 35 that Rachel died in Bethlehem. I showed y'all in the blessing that Jacob gave Joseph that he, he remembers Rachel who died in that area when he's blessing Ephraim and Manasseh. Now, so when you're seeing this prophecy, you have to understand this is a hidden mystery. The most high hid northern kingdom within the identity of Judah. This works to the deception of the nations that claim to be Judah when the blessing was with Ephraim or the northern kingdom the entire time. I know this is a lot, y'all. Let's keep looking. So the scepter would not depart Judah or a lawgiver until Shiloh comes. Shiloh was the capital or one of the cities given to Ephraim, right? You will see this in the parting of the different lands or the different cities when Israel conquered the promised land. So when they conquered the promised land under Ephraim, under Joshua, Joshua divided each tribe or divided every part of the land to give each tribe their territory. So he said, Judah, you're going to get these cities. Naphtali, you're going to get these cities. Issachar, you're going to get these cities, right? And so forth and so on. We see that Bethlehem was not given to Judah. Joshua understood that his foremother, Rachel, died in Bethlehem. So that one city within Judah would be where David came from, would be where the Ephraimite or the Ephrati people lived within Judah. So y'all can see how this sets the stage for a stumbling block. Because yes, Christ came out of Judah, but specifically he came out of the Ephraimite family that lived in Bethlehem. Now let's keep reading. So we see the blessing that was given to Joseph is the most legendary of all time. Let's read it. Joseph is a fruitful bowl, a vine. This is where Christ said he's the true vine. I'm going to drop that nugget. Even a fruitful vine by a well. A fruitful vine and grapes was symbolic language for the tribe of Joseph, whose branches run over the wall of the well. Right? You have this vine, this tree, planted by rivers of living water because the well is right next to it. Now, this is paralleling Psalms chapter 1, where David speaks of this blessing. He says, He that meditates on the word of the Most High day and night shall be as a tree planted by rivers of living water. What is this language? This is Ephraimite language going back to the blessing. Y'all don't know how powerful the blessing that was on each tribe was to their descendants. They named their children after this event. This is why Joseph, the father of Yeshua, Joseph goes back to Joseph. Because he was a descendant of David, who was the descendant of the Ephraimites. Because Jesse, the Bible says, was a part of that Ephraimite family that lived in Bethlehem. I'm going to show y'all that in 1 Samuel. Let me just go ahead and show y'all that real quick. And we're going to come back to it, but I got to go ahead and show y'all. So in 1 Samuel, I'm going to show y'all this day. 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 12, it says. Let me go back so y'all can see it. 1 Samuel 17, verse 12 says. Now, Dawid was the son of that Ephrathite of Bethlehem, Judah, whose name was Jesse. And he had eight sons, and the man went among men for an old man in the days of Saul. So he had longevity. Now, y'all, let's look at this. David was the son of that Ephraimite that lived in Bethlehem, Judah. So we see that Bethlehem is surnamed Judah because it was within Judah's territory, but the people that lived there were genetically Ephraimites. How do I know this? Let's go to the CEB Bible. I'm gonna show y'all. So if you go to the Common English Bible, y'all get so excited because our African history, our Afriat Ephraimite heritage, our Yoruba, Igbo, Nigerian heritage is the history of the Northern Kingdom of Ephraim. Y'all, we're gonna look at this. So if you go to the Common English Bible, y'all, this mystery has been hid because the Most High wanted the Gentiles to call themselves Judah, thinking that they were the lineage of the Messiah when it was the Afriat African people the entire time. It was Ephraim. It was Joseph's seed the whole time. That Christ being Messiah ben Joseph has so many mysteries in it, y'all. Now let's deal with it. So in the Common English Bible, which translates every word in the Bible to Common English today based on the Hebrew. I love this Bible, y'all. I have a copy of it. If y'all want me to do a giveaway, I'd be, I'd love to do that. But if you read 1 Samuel 17 verse 12, we'll see. Because I love y'all. I want y'all to get this history. 1 Samuel 17 verse 12 says, Now Dawid 
was Jesse's son, an Ephraimite from Bethlehem in Judah. So when you say that he's the lion that comes out of Judah, yes, because we see that the lion is indigenous to Africa to this day. Oh my God, there's so many mysteries that the earth declares, y'all. Yes, Christ came out of Judah. He came out of Bethlehem, which was situated within Judah. But that city, the people that lived there genetically were Ephraimites because Rachel died in Bethlehem, Genesis 35. And this is where her people, her descendants, her son was Joseph, his son was Ephraim. They said, we want Bethlehem because that's where our foremother died at. And David was a part of that family that migrated there from the beginning of time. They lived there even before all the other tribes were given their portion of the promised land. This clan of Ephraimites, that's why you see them called Ephrathite. Ephrathite is the Gentilic form for Ephraimite. Now I'm gonna show y'all that in the Strong's Concordance and everything. So David was Jesse's son and Ephraimite from Bethlehem in Judah who had eight sons. Y'all see how much of a mystery the Most High has hid our identity? Because I'm telling y'all, if you do your DNA, you're gonna be like, what is Yoruba? What is Al Andalus? What is, what is Nigeria? What is Igbo? The, the Igbo also claim, that's why I had a brother reach out from Africa and said the Injumbu, the Injebu, I hope I'm pronouncing it right. The Injebu that live among the Yoruba are how the Yoruba are the Benai Ephraim. That is really an Igbo group that live among the Yoruba. And that that family that migrated into night and founded Nigeria came during the fall of the Assyrian captivity. We see this with Derek Lang talking about the origin of the Yoruba and the lost tribes of Israel. The lost 10 tribes, that northern kingdom of Ephraim, is Africa. Specifically the heartbeat, which is those Benai Ephraim that we find in North Africa, Morocco, and that migrated into West Africa, chiefly Nigeria, through the Igbo and the Yoruba people. Y'all, we can say we're Judah, we come out of Judah. But when you look at the DNA, it's gonna show you Ephraim. The mystery is Yahusha reconciled both kingdoms within himself. Y'all got to catch this. This is how David was the only king and his lineage over all 12 tribes. Because he as an Ephraimite lived in Judah, but he could sympathize with the Northern Kingdom. That's why they love David. David was the best of both worlds. Y'all catch that in the spirit. But his ethnicity, his blood was Ephraimite blood from Bethlehem and Judah. Now let me show y'all something. I'm gonna show y'all. And we're gonna go back to that scripture I was at. Uh, where was I at? Oh man. Oh, in Genesis 49 with Joseph's blessing. We're gonna go back to that. But first family, I'm gonna show y'all the Strong's Concordance real quick. We gonna go through it. Now I'm gonna show you guys that H673 is the only word for both Ephraim and Ephrathite. Why is that important? That the word Ephraimite in the Strong's Concordance is the, is the same Hebrew word for Ephrathite. What does this suggest, JB? That the Judean scholars did a sleight of hand when they wrote Ephrathite. Because a lot of y'all have read that. A lot of y'all said, what is an Ephrathite? It sounds like Ephraim right when you read about david's lineage let's go back to that so when you read in a regular king james when it says okay david was the son of the ephrathite okay ephrathite uh, it must just be somebody that lives in bethlehem so now why would the scripture says david was the son of somebody that lived in bethlehem of bethlehem judah this is how we know a lot of scholars that try to say ephrathite is just somebody that lives in bethlehem is deception because it's redundant in the scriptures but not just that if you look at the strong's concordance that hebrew word ephrati is h673 which means ephrathite and also means ephraimite which shows you all somebody did was variate the word ephraimite in different locations to make it look like they're two separate entities when in the hebrew it's the same thing why is this important because the virgin birth doesn't have any legs to stand on if I show you that at best, even if you say Mary was Judah, which we know that's because she was a part of Levite and he had Levite priests within Judah, even then she is nowhere mentioned to be of the tribe of Joseph. The only lineage, oh my God, y'all gotta catch this, man oh man. The only lineage that will make Christ the Messiah is if he was from Joseph's lineage because Joseph is a descendant of David through the descendant of Ephraim through the descendant of Joseph. 
because Joseph's pedigree, those Ephraimites dwelt in Judea in the town of Bethlehem, that small town that was a small town of just these Ephraimite refugees. It was the least of Judea. Nobody really gave them esteem because they really weren't Judah, right? So they were just these this other tribe that lived there, right? Because their foremother Rachel died giving birth to Benjamin. So this was a big deal. Ephraim raised a lot of hell over that territory. So Judah gave them that city under Joshua of the tribe of Ephraim, right? So let's look at age 673. Ephrathite, ashiness or fruitfulness, an inhabitant or descendant of Ephraim. So one that inhabits Ephraim or is a descendant of Ephraim or also is an inhabitant of Bethlehem because these Ephraimites lived in Bethlehem because Rachel in Genesis 35 verse 19 died in Bethlehem. All praises to the Most High Now I'm going to show you all some more sources. H673 again, Ephrati. There's only one word in H673. And Ephrati means it says an Ephrathite or an Ephraimite. That means that this could be interchangeable. It's the same word, Ephraimite, Ephrathite. Somebody just variated the word to dissociate Christ and David from Ephraim. Y'all, there has been a big plot against so called Afriat or Ephrati African people to separate Northern Kingdom from Israel to do away with the remembrance of Israel. There is even a Judean plot of those ish Judah people that claim to be Judah that could be a lot of Edomites mixed in. We already know they are. A lot of Edomites that mixed in in Judah that overcame Judah. To this day, you have those Jewish people that claim to be Judah, which are really Edomites that because Edom was on the southern tip of Judah, a lot of Agrippa, um, Herod, uh, not just that, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, they infiltrated that. So they could be Southern Kingdom, but Southern Kingdom became a conglomerate of a metropolis of Edom and the tribe of Judah. But they want to do away with Northern Kingdom, when in fact, most African people are Ephraimites. The name of the continent, Africa, or Afria, comes from the people of Afri or the people of Ephraim. Right, y'all. It's this stuff. Is this this stuff gets deeper and deeper? We see this word used in First Samuel one one, which talks about Samuel's pedigree. It says of Mount Ephraim, his name was Elkanah. Elkanah, the son of Eliahu, the son of Tohu, the son of Zuth, and Ephrathite. Wait, it says Mount Ephraim, then it says Ephrathite. It's the same word. It's a sleight of hand, just like I am black but beautiful being changed to I am dark. They're both the same thing. That's why I tell y'all, a lot of these translations are trying to hide this, this information. That's why I'm glad the CEB Bible exists to clarify this, right? I'm going to show y'all a lot of other translations as well. So we see Jeroboam, that it is said that the Yarubah is named after Yarubam. This, you gotta understand, the letter J is only 500 to 600 years old. So when you see Yarubah, right, this is linked to Jeroboam, right? This is why the people of Yoruba get their name from Ephraim. When you go into the Banai Ephraim, the oral tradition verified by Cambridge, verified by the Jewish Encyclopedia. Y'all, we went through all those sources. Y'all gotta check those videos out because that's a lot of sources to prove that, right? So now let's look at another source. Ephrathite, H673, wait a second. The word in the Hebrew is Ephrathite, but it's the same as Ephraimite? Wait a second, Bible usage, Ephraimite in parentheses. The scholars know this is the same word. Let me show y'all another source. The Ephrathite descendants of Ephraim. The Ephrathite was an ancient biblical ethnic group in the Old Testament. Some of the famous biblical characters were Ephrathite or Ephraimite. Naomi, now this is the book of Ruth, the pedigree of Obed, the pedigree of Jesse, the pedigree of David, our history, the Afriot African history has been hidden in plain sight, y'all. Um, Elimelech, their two sons who married Orpah and Ruth who were Moabite. Y'all understand, this is where the Moors come from. They claim to be Moabites. I saw y'all asking this in the comments. I wanted to deal with it in the lesson because it's a big discussion. This is why the Moors call themselves Asiatics. They're tracing the Ephrathite lineage, right? Because Ruth and Orpah were Moabites. Moabites today is where you get the Asiatics from. But these Asiatics, these Moabites, Ruth and those, were the Afro-Asiatic. That Afro-Asiatic people on the maternal side and the husband side was Ephrathite, right? 
This is how Ruth, we know the story, she gets with Boaz. Boaz revives, he's a kinsman redeemer to revive the Ephraimite presence within Judah, right? Because they had to fight for their lineage because they were surrounded by Judah. This is why it was so important for a kinsman redeemer to resurrect that lineage. Now, y'all got to read the book of Ruth for that. I can do a, a video on that separately if y'all like. Now, when Naomi, husband of her two sons, died, her daughter-in-law, Ruth, the Asiatic Moabite, remarried one of the husband relatives, Boaz, who was an Ephraimite. David's father, Jesse, was an Ephraimite. Wait, 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 12. Did not just wait, wait, didn't we just read that? Let me show y'all again in the CEB Bible. In the CEB Bible, David was Jesse's son, the Ephraimite. They're the same word, H673. Now let's go back to it. So, David's father, Jesse, was an Ephraimite. The Ephraimite are probably the descendants of Ephrata, Hezron's first wife. Now, there's a lot of contention over Hezron's first wife. This is where the whole Ephrata comes from. But we know Rachel had already died there before this event. Now, so we see that that people had already been living there. Ephraimites had already been living there. This gets into Hezron's first wife being linked to this people, but it was not named just from her, but her people. Now I know that's a lot. Hezron is the grandchild of Judah and Tamar. Hezron's grandmother Tamar was a Canaanite. Genesis 38, Yeshua's bloodline is Ephrata. Ephrata. Now the question is which tribe did Ephrata belong to? The Bible does not indicate that she was from Judah. We know Judah was not given Ephrata because Rachel died there. Or from another Israelite tribe. Judah, we must examine, or to find out which tribe Ephrath belonged to, we, uh, before she was incorporated into Judah, we have to examine other reliable sources. In the Encyclopedia Judaica, it points out that the Ephrathites were from another group of people and that the second biblical name for Jerusalem, or Bethlehem, was named after the matriarch Ephrath. Ephrath, uh, page 816, an additional name for Bethlehem of Judah, Ephrath, the same as Bethlehem. Now, in the genealogical tables in the Bible, which provide information on the distribution of the clans, Ephrath appears as the wife of Caleb and the mother of Ur, the firstborn of Ephrath, the father of Bethlehem. The various biblical sources apparently indicate that in addition to the Calebite clans originating from the south, the Ephrathites, who possibly were of a different origin, also penetrated into Bethlehem. Now, who is this family that went to dwell among Judah in Bethlehem because they wanted that land? And their influence was so great that the chief city of the district was named after that Ephraimite family. In the Anchor Bible Dictionary, Volume 2, emphasis emphasizes that the name Ephrata or Ephratites probably means Ephraim. Also just suggesting that the Ephrathites were a clan within Judah. So Christ coming out of Judah, the mystery is he came out of an Ephraimite clan that lived in Judah. So you could say he was Judah, right? But the mystery is his blood was Ephraim. That's the hidden mystery. So he's able to reconcile both kingdoms, both tribes within himself because ethnically he is an Ephraimite on his paternal Ephrathite side, but he lived within the tribe of Judah. Now, page 557 says Ephrathite is the Gentilic or Gentile form of Ephraim because they lived there during the time of the Gentiles, even before the rest of the tribes were given the promised land, Joseph's descendants were already there, right? Now, Ephrati in Judges 12.5, 1 Samuel 1.1, 1, 1, Samuel's lineage. This is how Samuel knew to anoint David because he knew that David came from that same stock. And this is why he said David was after his own heart, right? Now, in 1 Kings 11.26, we see Yaduba or Jeroboam. Uh, Micah 5.1 and 2 says Bethlehem Ephrata as a clan within Judah, but they were actually Ephraimites. In the Dictionary of the Bible, Volume 1, uh, the Hastings Dictionary of the Bible, both dictionaries confirm the Ephrathite were Ephraimites. A Dictionary of Bible, Volume 1, page 728, Ephrathite, a native of Bethlehem or an Ephraimite. Hastings Dictionary of the Bible, page 234, Ephrathite, a native of Bethlehem or an Ephraimite. The Concordance online websites, such as Strong's Concordance, 
a new American standard exhaustive concordance of the Bible with the Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek dictionaries and the Net Bible also enlighten us and confirm that the Ephrathite and the Ephraimite, the tribe of Joseph, are the same. Old Testament, Hebrew concordance, Ephrati, a descendant of Ephraim. Word origin from the same Afer. Josephus talks about the bi -Afer, like the bi -Afrin war. The two Afers, Afer, the Midianite Africans, the Cushitic people, and Ephraim. Those are the people that name the continent, the people that live there. Josephus tells us about how Africa gets its name from these two Afers. The bi African War or the Nigerian War was the war of the Ephraimite, the Nigerian people, also an inhabitant of Ephrath. The Strong's Concordance, I showed y'all the map with Benny Ephraim on it as well. Ephrati, a descendant of Ephraim, also an inhabitant of Ephrath, right? Ephrati, phonetic spelling, um, Ephrath, y'all have so many sources, y'all can go deep and deep. Let's look at the net Bible. Ephraim, or Ephraim, an Ephrathite or Ephraimite. In other words, Ephrata belonged to the house of Joseph. We know this Genesis 35, Rachel died giving birth to Benjamin there. So this is why the Ephraimites wanted that town. They wanted that area within Judah, right? This finding means that Naomi, her family, her relative Boaz were from the tribe of Ephraim. And finally, King David's father, Jesse, the Ephrath Ephrathite is a descendant of Joseph. Y'all, this is a great article. I found this on Facebook actually, where this brother connects all these dots as well. Not just that, I got sources after sources. Gerald Brown talks about Bethlehem Ephrath. He talks about in Joshua 15 that none of the cities that belong to Judah include Bethlehem. Now, he goes deep into the Greek, the Hebrew of Ephrata, Ephrati, the same way we just saw that. And he gets to the same conclusion. Y'all can look this article up, Bethlehem Ephrata by Gerald Brown. We also see Jay's store, a reliable place of Cambridge, Harvard, all these sources talks about the settlement of these Ephrathites within Bethlehem and the location of Rachel's tomb, right? And he proposes a lot of explanation on Rachel's tomb being there, being in Bethlehem, which is why Joseph went there, why Joseph C. went there. Now, not just that, but he goes into David's lineage being connected to these Ephrathites, right? Being connected to them wanting to be where their foremother's temple was, our body was buried, uh, these fugitives of, of Ephra, Ephraim, you can call them, right? Now, the Ephrathite origin of David's family and Judah's royal house. So y'all understand, the royal blood lineage of Judah and the royal blood lineage of the northern kingdom is a specific family of Ephraim. Ephraim got a portion above his brethren so that Ephraimite blood is the royal house of the ten tribes and the mystery is even of the southern kingdom because David was a part of those Ephraimites that left and went to Judah because they wanted Bethlehem. This is powerful. This is how Samuel traveled from his town uh, Ramah located in the hill country of Ephraim to Bethlehem to sacrifice to Yah and anoint David. This is how Samuel knew about that city because Samuel, 1 Samuel 1.1, 1, 1, was also an Ephraimite. Let's go deeper. He was aware of the origin of Ephrath's or Bethlehem's inhabitants from the highlands of Ephraim, and did he and he did present Sam or and did he present Samuel's travel to the town of Ephrathites in Judah in the light of this? So he's saying, is this how Samuel knew to anoint David because he knew about these Ephraimites? The psalmist who composed Psalms 132, lo, we have heard in Ephrathah, we have found in the fields of Jair created a direct link between Ephrata and Jair, Kiriath Jiram. Ephrata is apparently Bethlehem, and the psalm relates that the rumor of the placement of the Ark of the Covenant at Kiriath Jiram reached the Ephraimites' town. They knew about it. This is how they knew, because David knew, and David let his people know, because David was an Ephraimite. Psalms 132 is closely related to the Ark narrative of 1 Samuel 4 through 6, 2 Samuel 6, according to which the most sacred object of the Jerusalem temple was initially located at Shiloh. Wait a second. The ark was located initially at Shiloh? Didn't we just see that somewhere in a prophecy? I got to show y'all. We saw in Genesis 49, let's go to Ju Judah's blessing. In Genesis 49, 
when we look at Judah's blessing, it says, the scepter will not depart from Judah. Judah would have this rulership. These Edomites that were within them would use that as a guise. But this was by the Most High's orchestration, nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh comes. Shiloh was Ephraim. The Ephraim's borders was where the Ark of the Covenant was, was housed. This is what this JSTOR article is referring to, that the Ark of the Covenant, according to which the most sacred object of the Jerusalem temple was at Shiloh. And this was captured by the Philistines and arrived at kiriath Jerem. And David, by his own initiative, brought it to the governing city he built at Jerusalem. Check this out. Because he heard it from the other Ephraimites' people. Does the text of Psalm 132 reflect a slightly different tradition? than that of the book of Samuel, according to which rumors of the first of the ark first reached Ephrata, David's place of birth. And only shortly afterwards did David initiate the transfer of the ark from the fields of Jair. Does David's origin from an Ephrathite family explain the great sanctity he attributed to the most sacred object of the house of Joseph? formerly erected in the Ephraimite cult center of Shiloh. The Ephraimites, they had great reverence for the Ark of the Covenant. This was a sacred object that belonged to the house of Joseph in Shiloh. Joseph went to reclaim that thing back. And David is the forefather of Yahusha. Y'all got to understand. So that would made Yahusha's blood linked to Ephraim, the Ephraimites that lived within Bethlehem, Judah. Now, y'all, I mean, make sure I cover these scriptures before I turn it back over uh, to the rest of the segment. And I know this is a lot, y'all. So we see Rachel died in Ephrath in Genesis 35. She was buried there in Bethlehem. This is where this set the stage for a lot of Joseph's descendants, the Ephraimites, to want that town. But that town was located within Judah. We see in Micah chapter 5, verse 2, that Bethlehem Ephrathah was one of the least cities within Judah. But Ephraim wanted that territory because their firm foremother, Rachel, died there. And out of that Ephraimite clan within Bethlehem, within Judah, would come he that would rule Israel, David, even Yahusha, whose going forth has been of old, even from everlasting to everlasting. Not just that, Joshua 15, we saw that that city of Bethlehem is not listed within the cities of Judah. Also, we saw in Genesis 48, that the blessing that Jacob gives Joseph is such a magnificent blessing that he crosses his hands to symbolize the blessing that was on Jacob where the younger was blessed over the older and the younger being Ephraim and Manasseh being the older. Ephraim got the birthright. This is the stage for Christ coming through that lineage. We saw in Genesis 49 family that out of Judah is that old lion. Out of Judah is that scepter. And to Shiloh the Ephraimite comes out of that lineage. And we see that actually it was Ephraim the whole time in disguise. And this is why the envy of Ephraim would depart. And the, and the hastings of Judah would depart when this mystery comes out, y'all. We see in Exodus 17 verse 16 that under an Ephraimite Joshua would be the war between Amalek. Now, y'all, I didn't go into detail, but I'm going to show y'all some scriptures I'm going to go into more detail with. I'm going to go to Deuteronomy 33 that shows you the blessing of Joseph, which is this vine connected by rivers of living water, the imagery of Psalms uh, chapter 1. Also, Christ being the true vine when he sat at the well in John chapter 4. The well he sat at was in Samaria. He showed himself as the true vine. I'm going to go into that on the next part. Y'all like, what? That's why he went after the Samaritan woman because she said, are you greater than our father Jacob? She was an Ephraimite that lived in that area. And that's why he targeted that woman because he knew where those Ephraimites were because Christ himself was an Ephraimite out of Bethlehem. In Numbers, we see about this, this, this Ephraimite imagery of this person that pulls his buckets out of living water, right? As this old lion out of Judah. I'm going to go into that on the next part. Judges 5, Deborah talks, talks about this great war against Edom led by the tribe of Ephraim. I'm going to go into that on the next part. Ruth goes into the lineage of these Ephrathites living in Bethlehem, Judah, Elimelech, Naomi, and the Moabite Afro-Asiatic influence. 
not just that in obadiah it talks about how the house of joseph uh should be a flame we see this in verse 18 that joseph would be that flame to consume esau this goes back to joseph warring against amalek this goes back to in the book of judges um, Deborah going against Amalek. This goes back to the prophecy in Numbers 23 and 24 about a Amalek Esau being finally destroyed by Joseph. This Messiah being Joseph. Yahusha, this descendant of David, who is a descendant of Jesse, the Ephrathite. Y'all got so many receipts. 1 Samuel 1 1 goes into Samuel being linked to the Ephrathites. This is how he knew to anoint David that we see as an Ephrathite. And when you look at the CEB Bible, Ephrathite is Ephraimite. Not just that. In Matthew chapter 2, when Herod went killing all those Bethlehem babies. And let me show y'all that real quick. So it says, now when Jesus, Yeshua, Yahusha was born in Bethlehem of Judea. Now this is that. You got to know the history of the Ephrathite family within Bethlehem, within Judea. In the days of Herod the king, there came wise men from jerusalem now let's go down because we see herod is going to try to kill all those ephraimite bethlehem babies but i got to show y'all a mystery now it says in verse 13 and when they were departed the angel of the most high appeared to joseph now this is mary's husband joseph and said take you the young child and his mother and flee to egypt go to africa until herod is killed right when they arose, they took the young child, they took Yahusha out of Bethlehem and went to Egypt. And there they were there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet saying, out of Egypt have I called my son. Out of Africa comes my son. Out of Egypt came Joseph. Out of Egypt came Yahusha. Out of Egypt came Ephraim. There's so many layers to this thing. Out of Africa came the daughter of my dispersed, the northern kingdom, the scattered tribes of Israel, the Nigerians, the Yoruba, the Igbo, it's so many layers. Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was very angry and sent forth and killed all those Ephraimite babies in Bethlehem and all the coast thereof from two years old and under, according to the time that he had known that that baby would have been born. Y'all, this stuff is deep. Now, this is the most important part, family. Y'all check this. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremiah. And Rama was there a voice heard, lamentation and weeping, great mourning, Rachel crying for her babies. Why is it said that Rachel is crying when these Bethlehem babies are being killed? They were Ephraimites. Rachel is the spirit of the land of Bethlehem. She is spiritually mourning. That's why that land is barren to this day. She cries for her children, the Ephraimites. Because Rachel is the father, is the mother of Joseph and Benjamin. She is the grandmother of Ephraim. So when Herod killed all these Ephraimite, Afri African, Bethlehem babies, these northern kingdom babies that lived in Judah, she is crying spiritually because she can't be comforted because Herod killed so many Ephraimites trying to search out the Messiah. The Messiah would come out of Bethlehem. This was prophecy. Now, y'all, I gave y'all enough for the time. Let me show y'all John chapter 8, where the Pharisees called Christ a um, Ephraimite or a, a Samaritan. Um, it's in John chapter 8. Let's find it. Now, the Pharisees answered unto Christ and said, We are Abraham's seed. We were never in bondage because they're Edomites. They descend from Esau. So they didn't go through Jacob's bondage in Esau. He said, How can you make us free? Because Christ says, The truth shall make you free. And verse 32 of John chapter 8, they say we don't need to be free because these Edomites were not under the curses that we were under, right? So they, we, they, we scroll down, we see. They say Abraham is our father, which is true. And they say you're a child of fornication. Or, or, we're not a child of fornication because they was talking about Joseph being the father. Now let's keep going. In verse 48, they say, Then answered the Jews and said unto Christ, Didn't we tell you that you are a Samaritan and has a devil? Christ answers and says, I don't have a devil, but I honor my father and you do dishonor me. Christ is speaking in parables. He say, I honor my father. I honor my lineage. I honor Joseph. I'm not going to discredit when you said I'm a Samaritan, but I don't have a devil because I tell you the truth. Y'all understand this. 
Christ was a descendant of Ephraim. Samaria was the capital of the northern kingdom. This is why he went to the woman at the well. It's so much, y'all. But I got to stop right here before this be a three-hour segment. And I'm going to go back to the rest of the lesson. Oh. What's up, family? So I know that was a lot of information. Y'all, I feel my voice was almost going away. It's so much history of this lineage. Why is this lineage important? Because when you do the research, you see that even, this is just not checkers, the Christians say, okay, well, Mary was Judah. Mary was Judah. The truth is, even if she was Judah, we already know this is talking about the Levites that dwelt among Judea because her first cousin Elizabeth was married to the high priest. The only way she could have been a high priest legitimately, now you had some Pharisees doing some other stuff, but we know this lineage of Zechariah, John the Baptist was a true ascetic line going back to the true priest. So the only way she was a wife to the high priest was she was in fact a daughter of Aaron. Mary in the Hebrew is Miriam, so that tops it off. Our forefathers named themselves based on their tribe. You see a lot of Davidic descendants called David, called Solomon, and also called Joseph. This is why Joseph's name is Joseph. Mary's name is Miriam because she was a descendant of the daughters of Aaron. Her first, her first cousin, Elizabeth, was of the daughters of Aaron. Now, this is important because we know that Christ had to be the descendant of Joseph because he was a direct descendant of David. I can do a video on the curse of Jeconiah. The Jeconiah linked in that lineage is not the Jeconiah that was cursed. I'm going to do a video on that as well. A brother asked about that. So we know that Joseph had to be the father because he was a rightful descendant of David. David was a descendant of Ephraim, Ephraim, the Ephraimite clan that lived in Bethlehem, Afrita, because we see Rachel died there. And a lot of the Ephraimites wanted that territory. This is why Bethlehem is not listed in the cities that belong to Judah in Joshua 15. Rachel was buried there in Genesis 35. We see that it was a part of the territories of Judah, but it did not belong to Judah, but Ephraim. We see this in Micah 5 2. I showed y'all in John 8 where Christ does not deny being a Samaritan. Not just that, but I showed y'all in Matthew 2 that the, the prophecy that was quoted was Rachel crying when all the Bethlehem's uh, babies were put to death under Herod, who was looking for that Ephraimite, Bethlehemite, and he fled to Africa, bled to Egypt to hide. So Rachel's crying, but why would she be crying? Because her descendants Ephraim lived there, right? So y'all, there's so many precepts which prove not only it does it debunk the virgin birth, but it proves that the identity of Yahusha was in African, an Afriat, Africa being the northern kingdom, that's a new term, not linked to Ham, right? Our people displaced Ham, the Bantu expansion, the Moorish Ephraimites that migrated into Nigeria, right? So African is Banu Ifran. I showed y'all the Jewish virtual library. I showed y'all the Tel Aviv library. Christ. Those related to the David family, we find after the expulsion of the Jews from Spain, we find them in Morocco. So this coincides with the Yoruba or tradition that first they were in Spain, they were banished to Morocco and later migrated deeper into the Gold Coast of West Africa. Most of our people come from these Nigerian people. The, the major groups of the Nigeria, the Yoruba, the Igbo, and the Hausa, all have old traditions going back to Israel. The majority of our people go to the Yoruba or the Igbo. That's why I'm highlighting the Yoruba, right? So we see family, that we find that David family in Morocco. We find that Sephardic royal family in Morocco, and I just showed you guys that through the um, through the uh, DavidicDynasty.org. So now we got the or tradition. That or tradition is verified by Cambridge. Ulysses Santa Maria also talks about in southern Nigeria, the natives call black Jews the strange people or the Emo Yokoyim. Now, so, so you had Hamitic natives that knew about these Israelites that lived in Nigeria. Not just that, but you also had other Israelites that called them strange because some of our people were practicing Islam, right? So this is verified by Cambridge, the Cambridge University Press about the um, Benai Ephraim or the Emo Yo Kwayim, right? They're called Benai Ephraim, the sons of Ephraim. So y'all, it's fact on top of fact. I'm gonna show you guys also that Jewish encyclopedia clip that also says this exact same information. Now, let's go into the scientific side of it. Now, if you guys did your deal, we also see that even before the first temple, you had Israelites 
in Africa, in Morocco from Eretz Israel. You had African Israelites that had been there way back during the first temple. Now it says a Jewish kingdom was set up there in Morocco, which was governed by the Afriot family, then named Ephrati. So we see this connection with the Moorish history, the Moors that claim Moroccan heritage, right? A lot of those Moroccan Moors were Israelites that set up a Jewish kingdom before Islam and was governed by the Afriot family. Now we see that when Islam spread through Africa, that a lot of these Jews were made to convert to Islam. Um, and this is why a lot of our forefathers practice Islam to this day. From a lot of that spread of Islam going through Africa, but originally there was an old Jewish kingdom set up in Africa by the Afriot family, the Afrati family, and Afriot, where you're getting Afri, are the people of Afri, Afrika. Library, right? Christ was an African or an Ephraimite from Bethlehem, Aha Afrati. Christ was an Ephraimite according to blood that lived within Judah. So out of Judah came that lion, came that scepter, and to Shiloh reveals himself that place of Ephraim, that he was an Ephraimite by blood. His forefathers went back to David. I showed y'all in 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 12, that Ephrathite in H 673 in the Strong's Concordance is the same word for Ephraimite. The Judean scribes did a sleight of hand and changed a word with a variation of the English, but the Hebrew preserves this truth that Ephraimite and Ephrathite in H 673 are the same word. Y'all, I got so much. I'm gonna do a follow-up on this. But I hope y'all understand our history as black people, as African, Ephraimite, Moorish, Israelite people, descendants of the so-called lost tribes, our history is so powerful because Christ's lineage is the key. He is the zip file of heaven. He is the Colossians 3.3, 3, the, the package deal where our history is hid, that when you extract the files, if you will, we find that Christ is the last remnant of Negro identity. Yahya Shafarik Morish Ephraimite lineage. We see this throughout the scripture. So I gave y'all so many precepts. First Samuel 17, 12. Y'all read it for yourself. If y'all want me to do a giveaway for that CEB Bible, it says it expressly in 1 Samuel. Word for word. Jesse was an Ephraimite that lived in Bethlehem, Judah, and he was the father of David, which means that paternal lineage was actually Ephraim. This proves that Joseph had to be the dad, and it also proves that Christ was from the tribe of Ephraim because David was from the tribe of, of Ephraim because David's dad, Jesse, was from the tribe of Ephraim. Y'all like to do a follow-up? I know y'all be like, where does JB get this stuff from? I showed y'all them sources. I know it's a lot to take in. Everything I give y'all is well searched out. This is why they call black people the lost tribes. They're talking about the lost 10 tribes or the northern kingdom that them Edomites that are trying to be Judah are trying to eradicate the knowledge of Israel. Israel is the northern kingdom. The royal family was Ephraim. We are descendants from that Ephraimite northern kingdom, Moroccan Haafrati. A brother showed me Morocco is, on, is the only treaty that America has not broken. <laughs> The treaty they made with Morocco is because Morocco knows the truth. I showed y'all the CDC where the Moroccans have to call themselves white by ethnicity. Y'all gotta hear me. Because more, Morvo, Morocco, that Haafrati Ephraimite, that was the hub that connects directly to Spain where those Moorish Israelites, that royal David lineage, David being an Ephraimite, they fled into Morocco from Spain and they lived there and to further persecution, push them deeper. This is the oral tradition of the Yoruba and the Igbo, verified by Cambridge, verified by the Jewish Encyclopedia. All of this connects to African history. The name of the continent is named after Joseph, i.e. Ephraim. So I hope y'all got a lot. I know it's a lot to digest. I hope y'all took notes. If y'all need a follow up, tell me down below. I love you all with the love of the Messiah. Peace, love, blessings, and Israelite more and frying power. Woohoo! Yoruba, Benai Ephraim of the tribe of Joseph. I love you all with the love of the Messiah. Shalom. All praises.